the fence. We came up, we saw a deer out here. He's in the back of these big haystacks. He's about 350, 70 yards. We're trying to take some distance off of him. I can see him down there. And they give us a slip. Now we ain't gonna get him now. I'm gonna cross that field. Too far out. 600 yards. Well, one thing's for sure, we got a beautiful sunrise. We might not kill the deer, but it's unseasonable warm right now, too, so the deer are leaving the field pretty early. Ah, great morning. Look at that sunrise right there. Ah. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Old horses messed us up just a little bit. They got to running. I don't know if we'd have made those hay bales or not, but. It was a good try. Oh well, back to the drawing board. Horses running through the field, deer running through the field. It was a great morning though. Uh, when did this hunt start? I guess it started many years ago when I met Jim McCarthy down the Harrisburg Sports Show and uh, Jim being a booking agent and through the years we became quite good friends. And I booked Bob Falkrod on this particular hunt with my friend Mike Watkins of Trophy Plus Outfitters because it's so great for the chance of shooting two deer. You hunt both states, he hunts in Wyoming and Montana out of the same lodge. We're sitting in the southeast corner of Montana. Uh, we're a mile and a half north of the Wyoming line. Uh, if you look at a map and, and see where Wyoming, Montana, and South Dakota all come together, you can just about put your finger on our camp, a little town called Alzada, Montana. Trophies Plus is located in the heart of the shared range of both mule deer and whitetails. So Bob's got a pair of tags in his pocket, and he's hoping to punch them both. You can hunt mule deer or whitetail in one state and mule deer and whitetail in the other state. So I said, well, that, that's a pretty interesting concept. Let's, uh, let's do it. A lot of country out here. We have some great country. It's all private land. You won't see other hunters when you're hunting with us. If uh, you're on a ranch, generally you're the only two hunters on that ranch with your guide. It might be 4,000, it might be 8,000 acres. Bob and Jim know Trophies Plus quite well after last year when they started off chasing muleys in Montana, then switched gears and states after spotting a trophy whitetail in Wyoming. First morning, we was actually chasing this mule deer, and all of a sudden, uh, we heard a splash, and we looked up, and here's this whitetail chasing this doe. Of course, it was right in the rut, so, you know, we just switched gears, that's all. That's what the multiple tags are for. The hunters wound up with a pair of outstanding whitetails, one mule deer, and a lifetime of unforgettable memories. <laughs> Whitetail and a mule deer in three days. <laughs> so I had such a good time, I decided to go back for the Winchester Legends Show. There's a deer right down there in the flats. See that big tree? He's right there in the flat. smaller than what we're looking for. 250 yard shot deer on that side hill. That would been a good one. Just a little too small. It was hard to see him in that sun. This year things was a little bit different. Uh, it was hot weather. Weather is varied. Uh, the first part of the season you can see snow just as easily as you can see 70 degree days. These deer were just disappearing. They were just moving out very quickly to get back into the heavy cover just to lay up for the most of the day because of the excessive warm weather. Although the heat is making the hunting tough, the deer are still moving around and keeping Bob on his toes. Yeah, we're going to the top of this hill. See if we can get a little closer. The sun's up pretty high. We got lots of time yet. If we can spot him again, get in close to him. Wind, if he goes to our left, he's gonna bust us, but he's probably down in this ravine. We stand a good chance of getting him. These mule deer were bedded in one small patch of woods with all around it completely wide open prairie. So we were going in, getting closer, and, and uh, we really couldn't see them. There was some dip in the ground. We're in a dip right now, so we can gain almost another 100, 150 yards before I think we're gonna see the antlers. We got the wind right in my face. 
face. Got the sun to my back. We'll stay right in that ravine. We'll get up there and see if we can spot some antlers. And we kept getting closer and closer, and all of a sudden I spotted a doe, and about the time she spotted us, and got the glasses up, and then, man, oh, they just broke out. There he is, there he is. This way. And they broke to my left, and I threw the rifle up on my shooting tripod there, and, and they was jumping the fence, jumping the fence, and I said, I'll get him just before he jumps the fence, and I looked in the back, and there's this big old barn in the background. He ain't gonna stop. Shucks. And I got a barn right in the back. It was a long ways away, and it could have been one of them things where I could have got away with it, but uh, it was one of them things I wasn't going to take a chance. Could have ricocheted, and so the, the right thing to do was to pass up the shot. Had the wind, had everything right to us. 125 yards. That's somebody else's farm right there on the other side of the fence. I was looking right at the barn. I didn't dare to shoot at him. I could have got him, I think, when he slowed down there just before he jumped the fence. I could have popped him right there. Bad luck. Nice chocolate rack, nice buck. Son of a gun. Darn. We passed up the shot and we started looking for another opportunity. It was kind of heartbreaking because this was a real trophy. Big muleys like that one are getting harder to find these days as mule deer populations struggle throughout the West due to urban sprawl and the loss of the wide open habitat where muleys thrive. Mule deer is, is really an icon of the West. But over the past 20 years, mule deer have had kind of a steady decline. The only big game species in North America that is still on a steady decline. The problems facing them are severe. Habitat condition, uh, habitat availability, it's all changed a lot in the last couple of decades. Urban sprawl, loss of habitat, home building on, on winter range, lack of winter range. As most of these western states have tried really hard to grow great elk populations and antelope populations and moose on the mountain and sheep in the valleys and sheep on the mountains, one animal has suffered throughout all this and that's been the mule deer. Proper management of mule deer is a hot issue in the American West and as always, hunters are at the forefront. The Wyoming Game Fish has what we call a mule deer initiative. We have a statewide mule deer working group. Every single dime that we get to try to help mule deer out comes from some sort of hunting sponsored group or activity. So I think the future is bright. I think we just need to, to, to keep pushing how important this is. And I think we'll be in a good place with mule deer in the future. weather was kind of kicking our butt. It was very, very hot. The deer weren't moving a lot. You would see lots of deer at the first light in the morning, and uh, they would sort of bed up. And the same thing with the afternoon hunt. You wouldn't see uh, too much moving around until maybe just 45 minutes before it got dark. Right there at that nighttime, you were getting, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, you know, some of the does and smaller bucks would come out, but you wouldn't see that uh, the bucks that we were looking for. I thought this was going to pay off tonight. So, we had to back in the woods here. We seen like three, three different bucks. It wasn't happening. We were having pretty, pretty tough luck. Well, I think that does it for today. They've never had people in their bedroom before. How do you get deer to pass within five or six feet of you? Old Spice, after your shower. And play the wind. Bob Folkrod is a whitetail expert who killed his first buck at the age of 12, then transformed his passion for deer into a way of life by running a legendary bow hunting camp in Pennsylvania for 35 years. Along the way, he's tagged some impressive bucks and all nine subspecies of whitetail. His success stems from intense preparation at his property in the Keystone State, where Bob's built his own hunter's training camp to test and improve his shooting skills. Well, we're not hunting, but we're getting ready for mule deer and whitetail. Quite often, you might be on a hunt 
It might be rainy and foggy. So we're gonna start a fire and then we're gonna shoot through the smoke, almost like a foggy morning because mother nature throws some curves at you sometimes and you'll be ready for it. I'm not encouraging you to take bad shots. What I'm encouraging you to do is look hard for your shot. Stay focused. If there's a little bit of opening from the fog or the rain or whatever you do, that's your shot. Again, ethics always comes into play, but it's the way you practice things at home that's gonna make you a better hunter in the field. I'm gonna shoot through this fog into the deer. It may be so thick at times that I can't see, but again, it's patience, waiting for the opportunity to maybe the fog to disappear a little bit. Boom. In fact, I shot a moose up in BC where the fog rolled in. The fog had disappeared just a little bit, shot him, fog rolled right back in again. <laughs> Down he went. Oh, that's a foggy morning. Okay, it's foggy, foggy, lots of fog. There's an opening. Dead deer. I know we're in Pennsylvania and it's something like 85 degrees, so we created our own fog. But things like this, find a way to practice at home. Find out what hunt you're going on. Talk to your outfitter. You never know what Mother Nature's going to throw at you, but give him a scenario of what's going to happen. You know, it could be in rain, it could be in fog, it could be in snow. You could do the same thing in snowy condition. It could be really just almost a whiteout with snow, and all of a sudden it lets up just a little bit, and there's your shot. Take it. Focus. And most of all, enjoy your adventure. This episode of Training Camp was brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Bob Folkrod's hunting whitetails and mule deer in the crossover range on the border between Montana and Wyoming. The weather's been hot and the deer action suffered, but all that is about to change. We were getting our butt kicks pretty bad and it really came down to the last, uh, the last day and wham, we got hit with a snowstorm. It started to sleet a little bit, the wind started to blow, and then the snow came in and it snowed all day. We still went out and gave it the old college try. And a couple of times they were out, they were after these deer, but as soon as they see you, they'd start to run. And it was almost like they were going into a fog because it was snowing so hard. got up in the morning, I think we were gonna hunt till noon and we had to go to the airport. This is gonna be the day. What possibly could go wrong with a beautiful day like this with a snow cover and everything? And bam, did it start to go wrong. We slid right off in the ditch and we wasn't gonna get out. Just because we slid off in the ditch, uh, I mean, a lot of people, you know, would have had the sad faces and probably given up right then. You always have to be prepared for the unexpected. And this, like we stand here in Wyoming, after a snowstorm <laughs> with the truck almost upside down. <laughs> That's unexpected. Yeah, that, yeah, a little bit. I've shot a lot of deer on the, on the last day. It teaches you to keep your morale high never give up, keep hunting hard, and, and you can't shoot him standing in the camp feeling sorry for yourself. Well, we're stuck. We can just still sit around, glass a little bit, and possibly maybe see some deer. I hate getting skunked. It's a, it's a card game, it's a chess match, and we spotted this whitetail going in this little set of woods. There's some big deer there. Well, I got a game plan. We're gonna walk over here about three, 400 yards, and try to close the distance and catch that whitetail if he comes out. And it's better than just standing here waiting for the snow to melt. I love hunting the snow. It reminds me when my dad and I, you know, would go out and, and hunt together. And seeing the steam come out of deer's noses and coming across the snow in Pennsylvania, that first deer I ever seen come across the snow, I was a deer hunter. I've got so many days to try to, to pull this hunt off and, and make it happen. There he is right there. Sure enough, man, he came out. He was going to cut across the, this, this dam dike and, and basically make a big circle in back of us. And... Three 
Bob's loaded his 30-06 with the Winchester Super X PowerCore 95.5. This exceptional bullet features a specially designed hollow point atop a one-piece bullet built for toughness while maintaining maximum expansion and energy deposit on thick-skinned game. PowerCore 95.5 will put a straight, heavy hit right where you want it. What an ending to a, a great hunt, I'm telling you. Fantastic. And that's a, that's a nice buck. That's a way to finish her up right there. Oh my goodness sakes. I don't know where he came out of. There must have been a little hole there, but he came up, turned around, looked back at us, and we laid the smack on him. Oh, I couldn't be more excited than I am right there. Let's go look at our deer. There ain't nothing like shooting a deer in the snow, I'm telling you. Ah, oh, I'm excited. Last day buck, but you know what? If I'd have had the opportunity on him, I'd have shot him the first day. We didn't get the mule deer whitetail this year, but we got ourselves a nice whitetail, and again, uh, the memories were high. This truly was an adventure, adapting to our situation. Conditions changed, we changed with them. Right here in the snow, take some old back straps home to Sheila and my grandsons and we're going to tell a deer story. Wyoming whitetail. <laughs> oh, I love it. Whether you're a hunter, shooter, or both, Winchester has you covered online. Visit winchester.com to learn about innovative new products, promotions, and what ammo to choose for your next adventure. Launch the award-winning ballistics calculator. Customize your shooting conditions and choose and compare your favorite ammo from five categories. Download the app for your iPhone and carry the ballistics calculator with you in the field or on the range. Be a part of the Winchester hunting and shooting nation. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. From expert hunting and shooting tips to exclusive video footage and news, Winchester is your online resource for all things hunting and shooting. Winchester.com. Experience the American legend.